Hello all, thanks for watching and welcome to our presentation on the MRS Hub, which is a project coming out of the Committee for MRS Code and Data Sharing of the ISMRM MR Spectroscopy Study Group. My name is Georg Oetschner. I'm here with Will Clark and Brian Sauer, and we're going to take you through a brief presentation of what the MRS Hub is all about. You might not have heard of the Committee for MRS Code and Data Sharing yet, so who are we? We are an initiative that began at the MRS Study Group meeting at ISMRM last year in Montreal. We developed an actionable plan to create resources for open source code and data sharing. And a few weeks ago, the Study Group Executive Board approved us as a permanent standing committee. These are the initial six members, and in the future, three members will rotate off each year and three new ones will rotate on. The initiative was born out of the realization that all of us waste a lot of our time and energy to recreate something that someone else has already done before. So we all spent weeks writing code to simulate basis sets. We all spent weeks tweaking our processing code. And all of this time is time that we don't get credit for. So let's not reinvent the wheel each time we do something. We can save ourselves time to do the actual science if we share the tools to do so. There are many additional incentives to an open science approach. First and foremost, journals and funding agencies are increasingly likely to require shared data and code, particularly in times of reproducibility crises. And let's be ready for this. We can be ahead of the curve. Then obviously, people leave labs all the time and projects get stalled. By writing code that is reusable by others, our work doesn't get disrupted when a postdoc or a grad student moves somewhere else. And finally, sharing resources is a great way to receive credit and citations for work that we create that is useful to others. With these thoughts in mind, we boiled it down to three main goals that we wanted to accomplish with the MRS Hub project. First, a place to share open source code, whether that just be a small snippet of code or a fully developed toolbox. Second, a place to discuss all things MRS work together on important issues and exchange ideas, and provide support, particularly to newcomers. And third, a place to share data that other people can use to develop new methods and benchmark their own software. So today, we'd like to officially roll out the MRS Hub project for you to use, which is a centralized resource at mrshub.org to fulfill these goals, an actively curated open source software and code collection, a forum as a community space to discuss and collaborate, and a collection of data sets that other people can benefit from. And this will give people access to data they normally not have access to and allows them to do exciting things with. The MRS Hub is going to be continuously maintained by the committee. The hosting is mainly powered by GitHub, which is a long-standing resource that will be around for a long time to come and should hopefully ensure longevity and continuity of the project. With that, I'd like to hand over to Will Clark now, who will tell you a little more about each of these three main pillars of the MRS Hub. Great, thanks, Georg. Hello, everyone. So as has already been set out, there's three sections to our website that I'll take you through now. Under the Software and Code Sharing tab, you'll find the collection of open source software. If you've come to the website wanting some code, you'll find that each submission has a list an example of which is shown here on the right. You can see a um, on these couple of listings, you can see that there's a little bit of useful information provided to us by the author of the code when they submit. And then we point via links towards the author's repository for larger packages, but we can also host smaller chunks of code on our own GitHub repository linked to this website. We also link any useful URLs and links to the, any original publications as well. If you came looking to contribute code to the website, you can follow our page of simple instructions to submit by email or the associated forum. And you'll need to give us a few key bits of information, but then we create the listing for you and link to the, where the code is hosted or hosted ourselves on that GitHub. So as I said, we also have a forum Forum is focused on the MRS community, both technical and users, um, and is, is meant to be a place where everything MRS can be discussed. 
It includes support categories for popular analysis packages, categories for data processing, analysis workflows, experiment design, and many others. The forum is moderated by the committee you uh, saw on an earlier slide. Finally, under the data collection tab, we gather important data sets. The data needs to be appropriately anonymized and ethically released, but then we're happy to list any data that is, is useful to the wider community. And there's no limits on the size, or whether it being too small or too large, uh, that we'll list, um, but the key thing is that it's of interest and use to the community. There's clinical examples, benchmarking data sets, or even hard to get hold of data like macromolecular spectra. For data, we're happy to host smaller data sets that is uh, under 200 megabytes and that will appear on the GitHub page. But for larger data sets, we'll list it on our, on our website, but then it needs to be hosted either by you, an institution or a third party website. Again, there's an easy submission process with good documentation. So now we'd like to highlight two examples that have uh, already made it onto the site. Uh, the first is discussion on the forum around the bids for spectroscopy proposal. So for those of you who haven't come across it, bids is a specification for data set organization, originally sort of made up for functional neuroimaging data. And the founding idea of bids is that by organizing data sets in a structured way, data is more easily understood, analyzed, and shared. And from that original uh, purpose around functional uh, MRI, it's been successfully extended to a diverse range of, of both MRI contrasts, but uh, non-MRI modalities as well. And so a few years ago, Dixon Wong kicked off the proposal for including MRS data in bids, and a number of researchers in the field are now continuing that work uh, by discussing it and coming up with ideas in the MRS Hub Forum. Uh, so in that discussion, we're covering data format, metadata, and how to label MRS data. And what we'd love is to hear from a wide range of MRS researchers so that we're able to establish standards that are useful for the whole community. And so uh, now back to Georg. Thank you, Will. Uh, we have also already received quite a number of really high quality macromolecule data sets, for example, from uh, several people who have been involved in a recent consensus paper on macromolecules. It's notably Christina Kodalbu, Ivan Tkach, Anke Henning and Tamas Borbat, Dinesh Dilchand, Mikhail Povajan and Wolfgang Bogner. They've all shared macromolecule data at various field strengths from animals and humans, along with LC model control files and documentation. And for each of these submissions, there is already an entry in the data set collection on the MRS Hub, where the data itself is hosted on GitHub or on external services, uh, such as the Zenodo, for example. We have already received some great MRSI data from Wolfgang Bogner, Gilbert Hangel, and Mikhail Povajan that you can browse as well. So we're already seeing some great resources coming together. We're very grateful for that, and we hope that you will find them useful for your purposes too. And with that, I'd like to hand it off to Brian Sauer, who will expand a little bit more on how you can get involved. So first off, I just want to say thank you to Will and to Jörg for all the hard work that they've put in in creating these resources. And I guess it's usually at this point in a presentation that we should try to do the hard sell on you, uh, on how it's up to you, the community, to make this idea a success, or at least not a failure. But that's not what all this is about. The MRS Hub is just a set of tools that we hope that others will find useful or interesting or maybe even a little inspirational. And as more of you join in using them, they'll get even better. They're designed to change as you, our users, find new ways to use them. So don't be afraid to suggest things. And as the slide says, we would rather you be a little bit lazy in a smart way with how you participate. Just give us a little bit of your time each month. Maybe schedule your forum account to send you a weekly digest of topics and pick one topic and post something. So give us two minutes each week and by the end of the year, we'll really have added up to something great. And finally, I know I said this wasn't really about success or failure, so maybe we could just turn the conversation a little bit sideways for a moment and talk about self-interest. So we really hope that all of you will find something interesting or useful on the MRS Hub as you start to browse or contribute to it. 
For example, there's a native Python version of the HLSVD Pro algorithm for residual water removal in there, if you're interested. But in talking about how to build the MRS Hub, the three of us talked a lot about how users might best use the MRS Hub. And what we came up with was that, like any good toolkit, it works best when you have a plan on how to use it. So whether you direct a lab or have just joined the lab, you should probably be thinking from the beginning of any project how your work might eventually end up on the MRS Hub. So as we mentioned, journals will be requiring in the future, and even now, to post the code or the data that you used uh, for the results in the paper you're publishing. MRS Hub could be one place that that gets listed. Or, as we all know, postdocs leave the lab eventually, so maybe you want to be sure that their work will still be accessible when they're gone. Or maybe you had a good discussion with somebody at a poster at ISMRM and just want to keep the conversation going. So post it on the forum and share it with others. Or maybe you just want to become a little bit more visible to others in the field outside of the papers you publish, maybe looking for the next job. These are just a few of the ways that we hope that the MRS Hub can benefit you and your lab. And just to recap, as of today, June 25th, the MRS Hub is officially open for business. The forum is the only thing that you actually need to join and get a login and password for mainly to keep the uh, spam bots from contributing to our discussions. But you can browse the MRS Hub website and the code repositories just by going over to mrshub.org and clicking around. Getting access to code can be as easy as clicking on a link to download a zip file. And if you want to contribute code or data, it's probably easiest to do that through the forum, so we encourage you to join that. And there's a list of easy to follow instructions on the website about how to download, or sorry, how to contribute data or code. And the slide above here uh, lists a bunch of other ways that you can be part of the MRS Hub effort, and we love it when people volunteer. And actually, most of these things also look good on your CV. Personally, I've had a lot of fun helping build this out. I think it could become a really great way for new people in our field to get to know the other people already doing work. Um, our research community is pretty small, and it's good to know other people in other labs and hear about what they're doing. And with that, I will close and say thank you for watching and welcome to the MRS Hub.